Namaste. Welcome, everyone. This class will be focusing on wrist-free. We'll do working with creating space in the wrist more than putting pressure on the wrist. We'll be active, create a lot of mobility, stability, and we'll require your focus. It's a fun class, so let's get started. Before we get started, if you want to learn the basics of Iyengar Yoga, I've designed a new course, Foundational Iyengar Yoga. This course is for you if you're a beginner, if you've been practicing for a while and you just want to deepen your understanding, or if you're a teacher and you would like to be more inspired, go back to the basics. So it's a six week course, 18 different classes, and you'll be able to go through at your own pace. You can find more details in the description box below. So this class is dedicated to not putting any pressure on our wrists, all right? So this is wrist-free class. Extend the arms from the shoulders into the fingertips and let the, the wrist relax and extend in line with the fingers. And then you're going to bring the arms out to the side. So get that lateral openness from the chest Drop the shoulders from the shoulders, move down into the arms. Lengthening the wrists through the fingertips. And now rotate the arms, rotate the shoulders, lift the arms up overhead. Dropping the shoulders, reach up. And then again, bring the arms down, turn the arms, come back to Tadasana. And again, rotate the arms, extend through the wrist, lengthen the fingers, spread the fingers, and then inhale, lift up through the arms. Stay connected to the feet from the heels, lift up through the inner legs, outer hips. Make sure the mounds of the foot are balanced with the weight on the heel. And then release, bring your arms down, and now take your hands behind you in Baddha Hastasana. So you'll bend your elbows and just take your hand on your forearm or your elbow. So you don't need to tighten the hand or wrist, you're just holding on. And from there, roll your shoulders back. You can feel the hands or the arms at the back rib cage. Move the back rib cage up and lift up through the chest. So staying in Tadasana, balancing on the left side, the right side, feeling how you sway from one side to the other. So finding the inner foot, the outer foot, inner heel, outer heel, and lift the chest. And now we're gonna change the cross on the arms. So crossing the opposite way. No tension in the wrist, just holding onto the arm. Lifting up, rotate the shoulder back, shoulder blades down and forward and then bring the weight more to your heels. So moving your thighs back, hips forward, keeping the chest lifted. And then release the arms, come back to Tadasana. And then you bring your arms up again, bend the elbows, keep the elbows lifted, fingertips touching one another. We're gonna jump our feet four and a half feet apart, four and a half, five feet apart. So take a nice wide stride. Jump the feet, turn the heels out, have the toes facing forward, keep the arms long, and then start to move forward. Lift the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana arms, moving forward. Hips back, thighs back, lengthen forward. Fingertips on the floor, palms facing one another. Inhale, come up. Moving the leg arms to the side again. This time move the arms back behind you, palms facing one another, lift the shoulders. Lengthen forward, release the head, lift the arms up. Keep the shoulder blades moving down, shoulders moving back, and then inhale. Swing the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. And bring the arms out to the side. And then jump the feet together. Come back to Tadasana. You're just balancing in Tadasana. Find your breath again. 
Get that openness that you had in Baddha Hastasana, moving your shoulders back, tips of your shoulders back, and from the top of your shoulder blade, moving down and forward. Okay, now we're going to jump our feet apart again, preparing for your Tita Trikonasana. So bringing the arms up again, elbows high. Inhale, exhale, three and a half, four feet apart. Arms are long. Turn your right leg out. So you're externally rotating the leg 90 degrees. Keep the arms extended. And now we're just going to keep the arms in that wide position, coming up and moving down. Keep the right buttock moving forward, left thigh moving back, extend up. So you're reaching forward over that front leg, keeping the arms wide in that wide angle, going laterally. Stay with the weight in the back foot. And then inhale, come up. Turn the feet. We're going to turn to do the other side. So I'm keeping my arms up. If you need to bring your hands back to your hips, you do that for a little bit of break. And then bring the arms back out to that extension. Stay with the weight in the back foot, the back heel. And now as you move forward, extend and lengthen. Bring the arm down. Just touch the fingertips down. Keep the pelvis so that it's actively stabilized through the legs so that the right, uh, left hip is moving forward, left buttock moving forward, right thigh moving back. One more time, lengthen. Keep the weight in the feet, front of the foot and the back of the foot. And then turn, jump your feet together. Okay, come back to Tadasana and just release your shoulders, release the arms, release down through the fingertips. Come back to your breath. And then again, bring your hands up. Inhale, exhale, jump the feet apart. Nice wide stride, a little bit wider this time, so kick your back heel back. Keep your arms long, come into Virabhadrasana 2. Keep this back arm over the back foot, so you keep extending back. And then look over the front hand. As you bend that knee, drop that right hip, bring the right hip forward, left thigh back. Keep extending right through the fingertips. Inhale, come up. Turn the arms, bring the arms up. Take a few breaths there. Turn the heel, externally rotate the front leg and then bring the arms down again, dropping the shoulders. Palms, as if you're pressing into the space that you, that's there, but let's say you could feel it a lot more. Press into that space, lift the inner arm up, and then bend the front knee. <clears throat> as you bend the front knee, come down into that close to 90 degree angle as you can. Keep the back leg lengthened. Turn and look over your front hand. Stay with your breath. Inhale, come up. Turn the feet, jump the feet together. Come back to Tadasana. Standing in Tadasana now, just take your feet apart. A little bit wide, hips width apart, and you're going to bring your arms up and then you're going to swing your arms through and move your arms back. So coming forward, lifting up, exhale, swinging the arms back, inhale, lift up. If it's too narrow, then take your arms back on the outer side of your legs, swinging up, bending from the hip socket, extend through the arms, walk your arms back, inhale, lift up. And then bring your hands back, down to the side, stand in Tadasana. We're going to jump our feet apart for Uttita Parjva Kanasana. Inhale, exhale, jump the feet, externally rotate the front leg. So coming essentially into that Virabhadrasana 2 action that we were just doing before Uttanasana. And we're going to keep the arms long and wide. Usually we go down and hold, we bring our fingertips on something. 
But here, we're not going to put any pressure on the wrist. We're just going to keep that movement, that expansion through the front chest, through the legs. Exhale, coming up and going down. Stay back in that back leg one more time. Lifting up and then coming up. Turn the feet. Externally rotate that front leg. And coming back down to that Virabhadrasana, bent knee position. Keep the arms long. And then press into the front foot. Press the shin back as you lengthen over that front leg. So as you go this way, shin bone moves back so that the knee doesn't go over the foot. So coming down and up, stay with your breath. Stay with the back foot, the back leg. Inhale, come up. Turn the feet and jump the feet together. Come back to Tadasana. We're going to go into Parvottanasana and then in Virabhadrasana 3. Inhale, exhale, nice wide stride, turning, turning with that Vimasana action. Keep the arms long, turn the trunk. <clears throat> and here we're going to bring our arms back to Baddha Hastasana that we practiced earlier. From here we'll lengthen forward, extend, stay in that back foot, turning that Back hip forward, front hip back. Inhale, come up. Bring your arms out to the side. Again, turning. Swinging the arms to turn that trunk, to turn the chest. Change the cross on your arms. Lean back into that back leg, straighten the back leg, lift the chest, and then come forward. Feel where the back ribs are turning back towards your arm. Move the ribs away from the arm and lengthen forward. Balancing, compacting the hips, extend forward, stay with your breath. To come up, press into the feet, into the legs. Inhale, come up. Now, you're gonna extend the arms down and bring them up, get that turning action again. And then bring your arms back behind you, palms facing one another. Have a nice wide stride, pivot on your back foot, heel is lifted up. Keep the arms straight right through the fingertips and then coming forward on the front leg, lift the back leg. Keep extending the back arms or the arms back, right through the fingertips. Lift the leg, lengthen forward. To come down, bend the front knee, step the back leg back, straighten the legs. Bring the arms out, and then turn to do the other side. Bring the arms back from the shoulders right through the fingers. Bend the front knee, lift the pelvis, lift the chest, and then As you stay bent, lengthening forward, you can feel the abdomen on the thigh. Stay low, bring the back foot onto the toes, balance, and lift the back leg. Straightening the front leg, lengthen, extend the arms, extend the heel, and to come back, bend the knee, step back, bring your arms out to the side, and jump the feet together. Come back to Tadasana, come back to your breath. Okay, so sitting in Swastikasana, you're sitting in a cross leg position. You have a blanket handy, you can sit on the blanket just to lift the hips a bit so that the knees are not lifted higher than your hips. And we'll just come into a twist here. So you bring one hand behind you, just be on the fingertips, or you can take your hand on your hips Use that hand on the hip as a little bit of leverage to open that shoulder. And you'll take your other arm up, exhale, turn. Bring the hand on the outer side of the hand onto the leg. So you're using that right where the wrist is to press, and then inhale, lift up, 
Exhale, turn. Drawing this right arm back, draw, press the right arm into the hip or the back. Inhale, lift. Exhale, turn. So continuing to extend up so that spinal column is lifted and you're turning around it. So there's a spiraling action. And then come back to the center and you can bring your arms up and then turn. So you're turning from the waist, you're turning from the chest and bring one hand back onto that leg and the other hand back onto the hip. Press that hand on the hip, roll the shoulder back, collarbones wide. Using the hand on the knee, lift up through that right side of the trunk. As you turn from the right back waist, lift the top chest. And come back to the center one more time. Lifting up, exhale, wide arms. Take a few breaths there. Continue to lengthen up, feeling where the weight is on your hips. So if I have too much weight on this left side, then you see the spine is falling. So I'm going to bring more weight onto the other sitting bone so that I can feel both sitting bones weighted equally. And then I'll be able to be right in the center. So starting to understand where your body is in space, using your sixth sense, proprioception. Where are you? And then release. Bring your arms up. Exhale. Feeling, because you're lengthening up so much, the waist is getting smaller. You're lengthening and you're turning. And then release. All right, now you're going to straighten your legs out, Dandasana. So bring the leg in. And in particular, you may need to have more height here. If you do, you take another blanket. Bring both arms up, turn, bring the elbow on the outer leg and take the other hand back, fingertips on the floor. Inhale, lift, exhale, turn. Again, if you're not using the wrist and that's too much pressure, then just bring your hand on the outer side of the hip. Use that elbow to the knee, to the outer leg, that pressure, turn. And then release, come back to Dandasana, and then take the other side. Reach Yasana three, draw the shin bone in, be right on the foot like Tadasana. Bring the arm up, bring the other hand back. So you can lift up off that hip and start to walk the arm down a little bit further to get a little bit more purchase on it. And then from there, as you bring the knee back so it's in line with this hip, just start to feel that back being turned. So you're turning with the breath, you're turning as a muscular action as well, but you're also turning given you're moving the knee away. And then release. Come back to Dandasana. And just sit. Now we're going to turn around at the wall. So you want to have a wall behind you. We're going to bring the legs up the wall. We'll start with Viparita Dandasana. Just the hips on the floor. So we're not using any, any support. And then we'll take the legs wide. You can have the blanket for the head. We'll end up in Shavasana. All right, so you're coming to the wall. Move your hips into the wall. And bring yourself in. You can scoot yourself in by just pressing the elbows and the upper arm. And here, if you do need that blanket, bring the blanket right up to the shoulders. From here, let's just take the legs wide, okay? So the thighs are moving toward the wall. You're extending through the legs. So again, have this lateral feeling from the center, from the core of the body out through the heels and with the arms, moving laterally with that openness through the chest. 
Draw the toes back towards you. Extend the heels away. Let the hands relax, palms relax. Relaxing the breath. As you exhale, let the abdomen move down toward the floor, lower back toward the floor. Hips are heavy. So you can feel as you move the heels back that your legs are moving toward the pelvis. So you're not just relaxed with the legs, but as you extend through the heel, draw the toes back, feel that the kneecap lifting and the whole leg is moving into the pelvis. You can feel both sides of the lower back on the floor, both sides of the hips. And then we'll bring the legs up. And we'll take Viparita Karani without support, just legs at the wall, hips at the wall as your Shavasana. Now, if you would rather come down and lay down completely for Shavasana, you can do that. If you're comfortable, the hamstrings aren't too tight, or if you need to come away from the wall a little bit, just lay, stay with your legs up the wall. And then just be here. So feeling the weight of the legs draw down into the pelvis, down to the lower back, releasing across the sacrum. Feeling that you've adjusted your shoulder blades, your shoulders, the inner arm rolling out like when we first started, getting that rotation on the top of the, the inner arm and the top of the shoulder. And then just allow the breath to do its thing. So we, we breathe in, we breathe out. So just let your exhalation now be a little bit longer. And watch your breath, travel with your breath so that as you exhale, your mind's eye, your awareness, your consciousness is on that breath exiting through the body and where you feel that. So you can feel that in the abdominal area, descending down. Just allow that to happen in a natural, organic way, not bringing in any pressure or aggression in the abdomen. It's just feeling the movement of the breath from the abdomen to the ribs to the chest and then from the chest to the diaphragm to the abdomen and maybe you even feel it in the pelvis so just be there i'll set a timer for another few minutes enjoy your shavasana namaste thank you for joining this class thank you for practicing with me today i have some other classes coming up so stay tuned and i'll see you on the mat